Welcome to Inside Sim Racing, I'm Billy Strange, and in this edition of Test Drive, I am previewing the Nissan 300ZX Z32 GTO in Race Room. So once again, thanks to the folks at Race Room for letting me check out this car early and being able to preview it for you all. Have to make a decision there, try on the inside, oh, couldn't get by, a little bumping, nothing too major using a T300 base 599 Evo rim TH8A shifter all from Thrustmaster and a Rick Motec GT Pro 1 pedal set go for the pass on the inside downhill carousel I think we made the pass stick now if you had watched my other test drive preview on the Mustang I talked about how that car had brute force off the turn, which made it fun but difficult to drive. This, like right there, this car's difficulty, the 300ZX's difficulty, comes within the turbo lag uh, on acceleration. And trying to clutch it sometimes doesn't seem to be a great idea. Uh, so I needed to just figure out the timing on the turbo lag. I try to just stuff my foot in it, get the boost pressure up, and right as it's getting on the boost pressure, roll out of the throttle so it doesn't keep spinning the tires, and then roll back in. And it's almost, it's kind of a backwards thought, but it's almost like when you're spinning the tire off the line or coming out of a turn and you want it to gain traction again, you roll out of the throttle so the wheel speed catches up with itself. Completely missed the apex on that turn and it starts shoving the front end. There we go. Yeah, that whole clutch thing uh, probably is not the best idea to do with this car because of the boost pressure. Do this downhill coming off the turn if you decide. Oh, that was a bad shift. If you decide to gas it right there, the car will get light, unload, and start to spin the tires. Ooh, we're crabbing a little going into the carousel again. Again, I dialed in uh, some rear end acceleration uh, grip, if you would, coming off the turn. And it does make the car push a little bit, but it was a little more manageable. Again, this was only like a 15 to 20 minute session trying to set the car quickly so that I could get some laps underneath me and put a race together for the video. Through the S's. You can actually drive fairly deep into that turn. Probably a little deeper than I did there. And again, the force feedback with this car is fantastic. Upped it from the 2.1 and went to a 2.5. So each car has its own individual multiplier. Uh, if I didn't communicate that correctly, it has its own individual multiplier so that don't have to necessarily change your your overall settings uh, you can just amplify everything per se and I find that works real well and I do want to give a shout out that force feedback meter uh, that they implemented is a great tool there's no more guesswork involved I can see exactly when I'm clipping and when I'm not and when I can use more force feedback and when I don't have enough So again, that, that force feedback meter works really well and allowed me to dial in the force feedback to an acceptable level. And it makes a difference. As you can see, I get some on-throttle oversteer there. This car is a handful. It I feel, because of that turbo leg, it is much more difficult than the, than the uh, Mustang. And the other thing that's great is all three cars between the Audi, the Mustang, and the Nissan here, they all drive differently. They all have their different quirks and characteristics about them that got a little light there. They definitely require a little bit different finesse for each car. What would be cool is if at some point Race Room came out with a street course that was, well, I guess you could use Macaw. Maybe one that's not quite such a pain in the butt. Even though that course is fun. It, uh... AI seems to have some issues on it. Maybe like an old 
like a Long Beach or uh, I think they went to Dallas or Phoenix when they ran this series. Uh, that would be cool to try. Now we're gaining a little bit. Oh, he makes a mistake. Ooh, careful. I'm gonna have a look. That's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to let him go. Again, started to get a little wheel spin coming off the turn. We're running on 110% uh, for the AI. Again, it's an eight minute race. Whoa, too much. Ah, overcorrected and the car pushed. Just checking to see if anybody was behind me. A little overdrive into that turn. Oh, throttle way too early, way too early. Tell you what, when this car gets on the turbo, man, you better hold on. Such a cool, excellent era of car. Again, that's, take this with a grain of salt. That's my nostalgia kicking in. But it is certainly... A little too deep into that hairpin. It is certainly, whoa, a little too much throttle. Ooh. Killed the, uh, killed the engine on that over rev. Again, too much throttle. It's so easy to do with this car. You're having to time that turbo lag. Again, I think the GTO series, just like the Group 5 series uh, that's in Race Room, or, and even the 92 DTM cars, are excellent uh, callbacks. You know, again, those series are older. They may not appeal to everybody. Uh, I think in regards of preserving history and such... When those series were out, we really couldn't get any games or sims that had those cars in it that were remotely... Wow. Way too much throttle. No, but we didn't have anything that replicated, per se, these cars. So to get them now, I think is fantastic. This is not something that they have to include, and I don't know how well these things do uh, you know, when they sell. Uh, I can tell you that just from the videos that I've been putting up on Inside Sim Racing and watching the feedback and stuff, the newer stuff tends to do quite a bit better uh, than the older, you know, retro or classic stuff, however you want to classify it as. And there is the end of the race. Well, I ran a 134, so at least my pace was competitive. Again. All I did was raise the force feedback, and I just did a couple small adjustments to the car real quick. Uh, it, it just has, just like the Mustang, it has great force feedback to it. So I know I sound like a broken record, but again, thanks to Race Room for letting me uh, show it to you guys uh, early before its actual release date. I don't have a release date as to when these are going to come out yet, but typically when we're allowed to do these pre-releases, it's going to be in the... Can we do hashtag soon? No, don't do that. Um... It'll be within the forthcoming weeks. Sonoma is also a very challenging track for this car. It was not easy to learn how to get around here without completely uh, spinning myself out or going off. I will say that the brakes seemed a little better on the Mustang, but that could just be the combination of car and track because of the momentum that you could be carrying. And now on to the community. In my MXGP2 video, Wally19 says, wait, looks good. This should have VR support. And that brings up an interesting topic. Having VR support in a motorcycle game would be very interesting. Can you imagine having that lean angle going in when the rider tries to lean? Actually, how would that work? Like on a GP bike, how would you... Or a super bike, or, you know... And between motocross... Or Supercross, that would be really interesting. And like, how would you feel when you hit those jumps? Or how would it feel when the bike does a wheelie? 
Would you have to look, you know, move your head down? Oh, wow, that would be interesting. What do you guys think? Would VR be a good solution for motorcycle games? And beyond that, uh, let me know if VR in general is a viable option for you. Are you interested in it? Is it something you're going to purchase in the future or maybe it doesn't interest you at all? If you have triples, do you, are you still interested in VR? Those are all interesting questions. I myself am kind of on the fence. I think I'm in a wait and see mode just to see how everything pans out. Uh, not that I think the tech is going anywhere. I just want to see uh, how quick those upgrade cycles are going to be with the screen fidelity and resolution and all that. How many uh, software developers are going to support VR? So yeah, it's something to think about. And like Wally... You can be a part of the community by leaving that comment below. You can also suggest something for our test drive series. Uh, if you really feel like it, you can follow me on Twitter at strange underscore Billy. That's B-I-L-L-Y. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. And for more race room coverage, be sure to subscribe to Inside Sim Racing and watch your feed for more sim racing content. Take care.